Well, hello and welcome to our Friday uh, Hebrew grammar uh, video. And we want to very, uh, you know, kind of briefly look through Psalm 139, 1 through 6. I think the first two verses more closely than the, the last four um, to keep this a reasonable size. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump in with the beginning of Psalm 139. Now, this is the heading uh, in uh, most English Bibles, and I don't actually consider this heading to be part of Scripture. And I, that would be a fairly common, at least when I was coming through the ranks, um, uh, going to seminary and college, I uh, went to Asbury uh, and to uh, what was then Central Wesleyan College. It's it's fairly common to to, uh, to consider these headings as things that were added later. So as the books were put into the canon, uh, which of course happened centuries after the books were actually uh, inspired and written, these headings were added. And so generally we don't consider these headings to be part of the inspired text. That doesn't mean they're wrong. Uh, it just means that um, there has generally been a, a freedom among evangelical scholars uh, to question the headings a little bit more uh, than the rest of the text, if you, if you know what I mean. So if we take this Lam uh, Natziach, if we take it and we break it apart, so this is a Lamed at the front, uh, that means uh, two or four, um, and then this Menatzeach uh, uh, is the musician of some sort. I'm not sure we know exactly what kind of, of in instrumentalist uh, this is, but for the, for the, for the instrumentalist, um, and then La David, uh, for David, um, usually it's translated uh, by David, but that's not actually the normal um, meaning of la. Maybe it means attributed to David, something like that. Um, but so uh, I have found personally, and you're welcome to um, electronically shoot me, I have found that if you look at a lot of the Psalms, or some some of the Psalms, and I'm not, I, I'm not, I have no problem with the idea that David wrote many of the Psalms. I don't have a problem with that. But inductively, sometimes, if you look at the content of the Psalms, sometimes it doesn't match uh, a Davidic authorship. I won't give you examples so you won't throw things at me. Uh, because we have, see, we have these great traditions uh, that we, we grow up with and we learn about them and they provide great meaning to us. And then we go to some seminary where they say, well, you know what? Inductively, the Psalm talks about rebuilding the wall which happened after the exile, not in the time of David. And it's suddenly like, oh, I, oh no, so many sermons are preached about this psalm. It's a psalm of David. And inductively, that is actually listening to the text. It doesn't seem to imply that David was the author. What am I going to do? But this is not, this is not anti-scripture. People experience this as being against scripture. No, it's against the traditions you grew up with, um, which are not scripture, never were scripture. They're your traditions. Um, and so a lot of times we say, fight for the Bible, but we're really fighting for our traditions about the Bible rather than the Bible itself, in my opinion. So um, uh, a, a psalm to David, a uh, mizmor, a, a psalm. Okay, so that's the heading of Psalm 139. So then we get to the beginning of the psalm proper, in my opinion. Uh, uh, Adonai, or, or Yahweh, Adonai, um, let's break it, break it apart there. Um, so, but we can see that this ta uh, is you. So this is perfect uh, tense, perfect tense. You, uh, and then uh, ni is me. So you formed me. Is that what this is? Uh, my brain is full of holes. No, it's you searched me. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Uh, uh, kakar, you, you searched me and you know me. The second me isn't there, but we supply it uh, with our, with the sense of the, you search, you have searched me and known me. This is yada. Yada often loses its first yod, or uh, you, it might even have, have been, um, uh, well, anyway, so the first yod of yada has gone away. This happens sometimes with this particular word, yada. Uh, there are certain words, for whatever reason in Hebrew, but sometimes when they get into forms, they chop the first letter off. And this is one of them, uh, I believe. Okay, so we get to verse 2. Ata, which means you. Um, and then this is uh, yad, Yada again. Um, you, 
and then this also means u. We don't need this u here because we have the u in the ta ending, but it does double duty. You, um, you know, yada, there's the full yada. You know, um, my, uh, the hierakyod is the my. You know my, uh, my sieve. She, you, you know my uh, uh, sitting downs. Actually, this is yashav. Uh, this is another first yod where the yod has gone away. Um, yashav to sit. You, you know my uh, sitting downs and my risings up. Uh, you know when I sit down, you know when I get up. Um, have you ever been somewhere where you were kind of watching somebody and then you turned your head away and when you got back, they're gone? Well, that's never happened to God. God knows our sitting downs and God knows our rising ups. He's always present. Uh, he's always seeing. Okay, our next uh, next line looks like I uh, somehow got these reversed. Uh, surprise. Um, yeah, I, I, I mixed it up here. So uh, <laughs> this is the word. Uh, Banta, which is uh, broken down into you, ta, and uh, bean, which means to discern or to understand. Uh, you discern, um, and then <laughs> this should be on this row, and this should be on this row. Anyway, it, it, we can figure it out, right? Um, la, re, a, uh, e. So e, we've seen e several times. What does it mean when we see e? It means my. So uh, you discern. Uh, my, and the word here is intent, my intent, you, you discern my intent, and then may means from, from afar, from rakok. Uh, you, you discern my, my intentions from afar. Um, some people are like this, of course, God is omniscient, uh, we believe as Christians, but, but uh, you, you do know, we can get a picture of it, that God is, you know, a million, a trillion quadrillion infinite times greater, but there are people who can kind of tell what your intention is, right? Uh, sometimes we get this way with our children. Of course, sometimes we get it wrong with our children, but this, this you kind of know where someone's coming from because you know them. Uh, you know their ways. You know the way they operate. And when they come to you, you know, okay, this person doesn't usually talk to me, but this is going on and they're coming to talk to me. I bet they want this from me. You know, that we, you can kind of uh, tell a person's intentions if you know them well enough uh, and you know the context well enough. Well, God knows all the context and he knows us thoroughly. So He des you discern my intentions from afar. Um, absolutely. Uh, this is true. Okay, now I decided from verse 3 on to go ahead and take the interlinear Bible and paste it in so that we can move a little more quickly to get through the rest of it. So here again, we have the Herak Yod. My path, that's the my, my path, my auric, uh, not, the, not the vacuum, but uh, my path, uh, and hierak yod. So this, apparently, our job today is to learn that hierak yod means my when it's tacked on the end of a noun or a verb. So uh, my path and, that's vav is and, my uh, rava, my lying down. So my path and my lying down, um, Zeriekta, uh, you comprehend. Okay, and another thing we've seen this ta several times today. Ta means that the subject is a you masculine singular. So you comprehend my path and my lying down. So you know where I'm spending the night. Uh, sometimes when I'm driving to Florida, I don't know where I'm going to find a hotel. These days, you should book ahead. But in the good old days, back before the roads were so filled, you know. You could just basically say, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to pull off at the next exit and, you know, get a hotel. And, and you, I didn't necessarily know where sometimes I was going to stop or my, my dad was going to stop. And so, but God does. God knows which motel you're going to stay at. You comprehend my path. You know, you know whether I'm going to go through Nashville or Knoxville because um, you could go either way to Florida. You know my path and my lying down, you comprehend. Uh, and there's the word for and, and all. Uh, my ways, all my Derek, all my ways. Um, there's the, it's not a Herak Yod here, but the Yod is where the my comes from because it's plural. That's why it doesn't come out quite the, quite the same, I think, here. So you know my ways. Uh, so uh, uh, Hebrews changed the order here. Uh, well, no, it hasn't actually. It puts the object before the verb. My path and my lying down, you comprehend. All my ways, 
you are acquainted with. Um, so this here, if I ask what are the base, why well, there's a lot of letters. Hebrew usually doesn't have that many letters. Well, let's break it down. So ta, there's the you, you are, you are acquainted. Uh, so ta, like ta-ta, uh, means the subject's a you, second masculine singular. Um, the, word, the letters are uh, samik, kaf, uh, nun, uh, sakan, uh, to, to acquaint. Now H here, this makes it hifiel, or the H stem. Um, you are, are caused to know, or something like that. Um, we could, uh, I can't click on this. Uh, the Strong's number would tell me what the word is, but the H on the front, the hey, suggests that it's causative. You cause, you, you cause to know, um, or you cause whatever the root of sakan is, but it comes out basically being, uh, you are acquainted with all, call means all, all my ways, okay? For ain, ain means there is not, for there is not uh, mele, mela. There is not a word, uh, this is not the typical word for word. Um, maybe, maybe it has more of a sense of a, of a, spoken, a spoken word. Uh, there is not a word on my tongue. So the hirik yod is the my at the end, we've seen that. The ba is in or on, and then lashon is the word for tongue. So on my tongue. For there is not a word on my tongue. Hain, behold. Behold, Lord, Yahweh, behold, Lord, you know it. You know it all together. There's not a word on my tongue. So uh, what's he going to say? What's he going to say? Have you ever completed other people's words for them? Uh, sometimes this happens when you really know someone really well. I, I fear that I do this sometimes annoyingly, where I kind of see where they're going. Or, and sometimes I don't, because that's the part when you, when you say the wrong word. You know, have you ever had that where somebody's trying to think of a word and you keep trying to suggest words and you're wrong all the time? Well, God never does that. God always guesses. Uh, well, he knows. He doesn't guess. He knows the next word you're going to say. Um, yad, uh, uh this again, the ta is the you. Um, you, 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 Lord, all caps usually for Yahweh in translation. And yada, again, the word for knowing. Uh, you know it. Uh, kula, you know it all, all together. And you can see call uh, here is probably related to coal that we saw on the other uh, slide, meaning all. Okay, verse five. Uh, Akor, behind, uh, vakedem, and ahead. So you know what's behind me, you're behind me, and well, it's not knowing here, it's you hedged me. You, you're protecting me. You've got a front guard and a back guard. Um, you, you got me covered. You know, I don't have to worry about being attacked because before and behind and behind you're, you're, you're hedging me in. There's the you, ta, and there's the me. So again, we've, we're seeing a lot of the same elements today. Uh, so it's a good day to nail that down. Ta on a verb, on a perfect verb, uh, indicates you, ma second masculine singular. You, hedged, and then here it yod means me. And sometimes you have this nun to kind of help the e along. Um, so the noon is completely meaningless. It's like a little fatty tissue uh, that, you know, you could lose that weight. Uh, but anyway, so the ta is meaningful, meaning you, car, hedged, and then here it goes, is me. You hedged me. And uh, you laid upon me uh, your hand. Now, um, so this is uh, um, vav, patak doubling means it's a past tense. Uh, this is and, and then the tav on the front is also a you. So uh, it's the Hebrew's a little confusing. Uh, with the perfect tense, you add stuff at the end. With the imperfect tense, you add stuff at the beginning. This this was in this was perfect, so it added ta at the end to say you. This is imperfect, and so it adds the tav at the front to say you. And <laughs> who invents these languages? Um, so. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure what um, what the basic. Um, maybe it's uh, the the verb sheet uh, to to put. Uh, am I remembering that right? I uh, maybe. Boy, it's early in the morning. I haven't had coffee yet. But you you put upon me your hand might be what the meaning here. Um, upon me, all means upon, and there's the there's the yod indicating me. Uh, and then. Um, I think the ka here is the your. Now, uh, ta is you when it's 
ta is you when it's a verb, but ka, and we've seen it before, ka is when it's a noun, your hand. So if you want to say you hedged, that's a verb, and you put ta on the end. But if you want to say your hand, that's a noun, and you put ka at the end. This uh, hey is a little unusual, uh, but I'll deal with it. Okay, so behind and before me, you've hedged me in, and you've laid your hand upon me. In other words, nope, not that way. Nope, not that way. Not that way. You're, you know, he's directing my path. And so finally, too wonderful such knowledge is for me. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I, I did just a teeny, teeny bit of searching, but it looks like there are uh, some Hebrew texts that have this wrong. Um, this is what it should be. Um, so the Yod should come before the, the um, Aleph. But there are some Hebrew texts where the Aleph comes before the Yod. And apparently, I'm guessing the Masoretic tradition uh, uh, does this a lot. Um, and they don't put the, the vowels usually when they print it like this. Um, but this is what it should be. So apparently there's a transcription problem uh, with this verse that has made its way into a lot of medieval uh, manuscripts. But basically, the point is, too wonderful knowledge is uh, for me. Now, this is min at the front that means from, and then me, the hierarchy at the end. So from me, uh, it's a long, it's, it's, there's a lot of extra letters. It's kind of like, we don't need all those extra letters. Uh, uh, memeni, uh, but that's the way it is, and so we'll deal with it. It basically means from me. Some such, too wonderful such knowledge from me, but we wouldn't say that in English. We'd say for me. Da'at is related to yada, that means to know, uh, but this is the noun form, da'at, knowledge. Knowledge, wonderful for me. Um, it is high. Um, so uh, I think this is a nifal. You can see here that it's nifal, uh, which suggests that this N is a performative that's been stuck, stuck on the front. The nifal uh, or N stem indicates that you make it passive. Uh, so it, it, it is high. Um, I don't make it high. It is high. Um, it, is, it is high. Not can I attain to it. So there's Lamed to and hey it to it. And then I, Aleph is I uh, on the front of an imperfect um, Yakal, able. I'm not, I'm not able to it. Literally is what it says. I'm not able to, uh, not, not am I able to it. Um, and of course, it's true, obviously. The, the knowledge of God is, is way beyond my pay grade. It's not something I can ever attain to. Although we try, right? Or we pretend. More often than not, we pretend that we know what's going on uh, when in fact God is the one that knows what's going on. Well, there you have it. A little rough at points. I apologize. Uh, but uh, we've gotten through six verses of Hebrew. I obviously know Greek better than Hebrew. Uh, but I think, I've, I think I've been accurate. I think I've, I've, I've pretty much got through it. Um, if I ignored, uh, uh, confidence is uh, uh, a great thing, right? Um, there are many people who, by pretending to be confident, um, go places that they really shouldn't be. Well, okay. Uh, this has been Hebrew, uh, Psalm 139, 1 through 6, on Friday, week five of our journey through Old Testament theology. This week was about God's omniscience.